it usually stems from like father and mother stuff and then they'll reapply it to every um situation so for example someone that had a narcissist parent they tend to attract that so you're attracting the same kind of energy until you heal it and it's so interesting so I'm like maybe you want to and I'll just put something out like maybe you want to explore your relationship with your parents right um and okay I got I got to touch on this so um, okay yeah there's yeah. one of the best selling relationship books of all time is called getting the love you want. And, mm-hmm. um, essentially it talks about, there's this theory that mm-hmm. the partner that you choose is essentially your parent of that sex. And it's giving you a second chance to overcome or fix what, you didn't like about that parent. So when you were a kid, you couldn't control that you had a narcissistic parent, say, I don't know, mom, Mm -hmm. and that you then go and you choose a narcissist because that's something you were familiar with. And this is a chance for you to actually change a person. Um, It's like, again, the childhood trauma, pulling that forward. And you think like, Ooh, that's gross. Like I, I keep trying to date my mom or my dad. <laughs> and it, it's, yeah. it's true. Like I've had so many partners that are like, Oh man, you remind me of my dad, like super driven business, but that's also what they didn't like about their dad, that the dad wasn't home that much, that they didn't get the emotional stuff because they were always out and and more like a robot, um, you know, grinding and doing the work. And, you know, on the dad's side, it's like, I, you know, we were broke growing up and then I worked hard and built a business and gave you a great life and provided for you, but that's not what the child wants. Right. So it's, I yeah so there's that book uh, getting the love I, you want and it goes deep the- into that and you're like oh that's weird but I I think I think there's probably some truth there I I definitely agree um I'm just writing the book down because every time some a book comes up that I need to read I have to write it down um or put it in my phone but I there's a hundred percent value in that I mean we're both not psychologist I don't think you are are you a psychologist but well I claim to be (laughs) on Fridays I claim to be just like me on Fridays um but um I I I went to I still go to a psychotherapist and he said absolutely that he said you absolutely this is like 100 percent you subconsciously attract your parents he was like that is that most people do it the ones that are not in conscious awareness and then you have the opposite where the people are like i'll never be with them <laughs> never one and they like purposely look for it but then this sub how some conscious energy comes in and they've attracted some quality that they were avoiding and it showed up and i think it's really interesting um because i i did that and part of me also had to learn that i'm not projecting onto my partner the trauma I received from like let's say my dad had a lot of anger issues Uh, we used to call him the incredible hulk we never knew when he was gonna like turn into the incredible hulk and he wouldn't remember like he would like punch walls or something and I love my dad like uh, he's a a wonderful guy so I don't want to like make it seem like he's this like tyrant (laughs) but there's parts of our personality and behavior that um we're conditioned and want to improve on so I'm sure that's something he, he wanted to improve on eventually. Um, but then he wasn't aware. So he is this like anger and I was, and, and this, and this tire. And so I made sure I'm like, I am never finding someone who's angry. Like I need them to be the most gentle and understanding and patient person. And, you know, um, but my dad also, um, had other you know he had good qualities he had a lot of like laughter and there was so much humor and that's kind of one of our my things that I love I love humor and so I I, everything I kind of probably avoided it still showed up though for me to heal like other things um I don't want to get too much into detail because it's not about like my life and and my psychological understanding but knowing some of these things has helped me with my clients so And going into therapy and being like, aha, those moments of awareness of myself, of my conditioning, of what happened to me, of like the trauma, how I responded to it, how it's coming back subconsciously in a cycle. I think everything cycles. I think like when I go into deep meditation, I'll see like 
geometric patterns and like cycles. And I feel like that's, that's what we do. We, we revisit and we, we cycle back and maybe it's neurology um, based. So the brain, and so that's why I get into neurobiomagnetism where the brain is conditioned in that certain way. And neurobiomagnetism will use like a low um, frequency electromagnetic pulse to make the other neurons more discoverable as well as your awareness. Um, so say, to say you have other options, you know, there's other neural pathways here that you can discover to address these situations. It doesn't have to always be this pattern. So um, yeah, I really, I, I definitely want to read that book um, because uh, like, I think it's 100% true. It's if you're true. not aware. I, I, went, really uh, <laughs> I went, I went in high school, I went on a date with a pretty girl and I was, I was dropping her off. And I, I look over and she, she looked like my mom, but like a young, like a, yeah. And, and it, that was it. It was like, I can never unsee that. And, <laughs> and it's like, there's nothing wrong with this girl. And it just, unfortunately, she like, reminded like me that. of what my mom looked like when yeah. she was younger and, and that was game over. So that's like but, that sorry, commercial. Girl. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen that commercial where he's like, you're weird. You're dating someone that looks like mom. And then like, they're. I don't know what it is and they look exactly the same and he's like oh yeah I just noted I think it was like eggs for dinner and like that's weird and you're weird or anyways the whole point is like yeah it's so subconscious I think and I think it's probably um programmed in this as an evolutionary means potentially you know you stay in your in your tribe this is you know people tend to like marry within the same tribe let's say um and and it's also what they're used to right so not everyone has a negative experience with their parents. Most people, to be honest, after like living life, have very positive experiences with their parents, right? And they and they they want to look for that. They're looking for somebody that had those qualities in their in their dad that they really admired, um, in their mom that they really admired. Yeah. But it's funny when you're not used to it when they look they look alike yeah. <laughs> yeah sometimes you see a couple where they look like brother and sister yes. like they both have blue eyes they both wear glasses and you're like that's kind of weird like they're both attractive people but they look like the same person but like the, the other gender yeah I've gotten that about my husband and me we were like I remember we were randomly I don't know actually no it wasn't randomly um we were in the hospital because he had appendicitis anyways and I was taking care of him and the nurse was like your brother I'm like what that's not my brother <laughs> that's my husband. <laughs> I was like, yeah, so I definitely can see that I can see. And then you get the people that kind of start looking more alike <laughs> once they start dating. But yeah, I, I get that. I, that's funny. I, so I have a French Canadian background and yeah. I dated a Portuguese girl for four years and never in my life had anyone ever said, Oh, are you Portuguese or you look Portuguese? And once I started dating her, almost everyone I met, they're like, Oh, do you have a Portuguese background? And it's like, I must've picked up like some mannerisms or something. Right. Um, but just like you said, like a couple as they're together longer, they start to look alike or act alike. So I, I got that somehow with a Portuguese girlfriend, I became semi-Portuguese. So I, I get it. I get it. And I guess, you know, from what I've read, um, it's evolutionary, like to be accepted in the tribe, you're more like them, you're similar, you adopt the mannerisms, and it's based on survival sometimes, right? Like you, you know, the tribes were life or death. If you, right. <laughs> yeah. if, if you got kicked out of the tribe, you were dead because right. the, the wildlife would kill you. The other tribes would kill you. So you had to yeah. fit in, you had to be liked. Right. So tribes were everything. And that's why we still right. have tribalism. You can't just yeah. go against yes. your programming, you know, that's it. And I think that's it. You, it's like a, this programming that you have. So you assimilate, you assimilate to your tribe. I get that. 